Today, we got a story about a guy whose pregnant wife cheated and won't stop. Let's get right into it. Me, 28 male, and my pregnant wife, 30 female, have been married for four and a half years and have a beautiful little girl who is three. Last year, we bought a house which came with a massive amount of stress due to being put through hell by the solicitors we were dealing with. Documents upon documents required, information requests that we had already sent, being ghosted by them until we sat on hold with them for hours waiting to speak to someone, each time telling us a different thing. It was a tough time, but at long last, we got a house we both loved and would be amazing for a little one. We tried for a second child a few months after moving in, but it just wasn't happening. My wife began to worry that we couldn't conceive a second, as the first one had been so quick after trying only a month. I had some reservations about a second child so soon after the stress of moving, and I was trying to get a better job at the time, so we could be more stable. I told her this and she got really upset, thinking if we didn't try now, we would never conceive. I relented as I saw how much it meant to her, and I did want a second child, so we tried. Months rolled on until eventually, she fell pregnant. It was great as she was immensely happy, but I had a nagging dread of responsibility that if I didn't get a better job soon, we would struggle with two children. I locked myself away for a few months participating in online courses to try and get the skills needed to move into a different career path, something we had discussed and she seemed to be on board with. During this time, we did drift apart as I only saw her for a few hours a night at dinner and then I would go upstairs to the study on the courses. We grew distant and didn't really interact all that much. We still had a decent amount of sex for a married couple, at least once a week, oftentimes more. Fast forward three months and we have a talk saying I think we've grown apart a bit and that we weren't like the old us. Things had got a bit robotic with me trying to learn and study ASAP to get a new job with the baby on the way. We agreed we needed to take more time out for each other as things had gotten a bit stale between us. We spoke more from that point onward and she mentions how happy she is at work with her team. One guy in particular she seems to mention more than anyone else in her stories. She changes almost overnight. Suddenly, she starts doing things she wouldn't usually do. She is on her phone almost constantly, taking baths every single day immediately after work, shaving her legs routinely and really going to town on makeup and moisturizer. I questioned her about it at the time. She responded that because she was getting bigger, she wanted to look after herself more and feel a bit better about herself. I bought it. Understandable, right? She's getting worried about being bigger, so I thought it was a good thing she was doing these small things that made her feel good about herself. It was other things as well. Small things that gave me the idea that things weren't as they appeared. Staying later after work, wanting me to go upstairs earlier at night to put our daughter to bed, things like that. Still, I didn't suspect anything and trusted her 100%. One day, out of the blue, she asked if I was okay to go away for the night to see an old school friend she hadn't seen in a long time. I said, sure, that's fine. It would be great for her to catch up. It didn't even enter my mind that she was having an affair with a guy from work, or anywhere for that matter. A week or so later, my mother-in-law visits and tells a story of her friend who was going through a divorce. Her friend had found texts on her husband's phone that he was having an affair. My mother-in-law and I discussed how awful it must be, and then we couldn't imagine getting to a stage where we felt the need to check our partner's phones. I looked at my wife during the conversation, and for the tiniest split second, saw a flash of unease and fear wash over her face. Then it was gone in a blink, and the conversation continued. That was when I started adding things up. I didn't actually believe she had done anything, but there was something in the back of my mind that was nagging at me. As I connected the dots, I became more and more concerned. After she had gone to bed, when I would usually be studying, I walked into the bedroom, and it was like I'd caught her in the middle of something. She was in bed, and had pulled the covers right up to her chin quickly as I entered. I asked if she was okay, had a small chat about a few things, and kissed her goodnight. My mind was now on red alert. I knew her password from when we got together originally, so I logged into her social media accounts on my computer back in my study, and what I saw was worse than I could have imagined. They had been sending videos of each other masturbating and talking dirty for the last week. She had been doing it when she went to bed, and I was studying after I had put our child to bed. The conversations had made it clear they had been having sex at work and even had sex in our house whilst I was working. I also found out he was almost 20 years older than her and had a wife and two kids of his own. She had been doing things with him that she would never do with me sexually. He would give her assignments each morning on what to wear, how to talk to him, etc., and she was absolutely loving it. She suggested they book a hotel away as she couldn't bear the thought of being away from him and would say she was meeting up with an old school friend. 
The messages seemed to indicate that she was pushing things further and further and was planning around our schedule to get in quickies whenever she could. Pure adrenaline rushed through me as I saved everything I could from those conversations and I slept next to my daughter that night. I didn't actually sleep, I just kind of laid there, thinking and crying. She left for work in the morning and I didn't say anything. It was hard to do, but I didn't really know what to say. She got all dolled up and was happy as can be as she left that morning and it crushed me. I had planned to confront her when she got home. My mother-in-law came to collect our daughter as she looked after her whilst we were both at work and I broke down and told her everything. She was extremely sympathetic and disappointed. My wife came home and knew she had been found out. I vented and wanted to know why. Why had she done this? Was the baby mine? Does she love the other person? Does she want to stay together? So many questions. Initially, she didn't say anything and wouldn't answer my questions. She just looked at the floor, zoning out, thinking. After ranting for a while, I asked if she could actually talk to me as staring at the floor was not what I needed from her right now. She swore it had only been in the last week that things between them had escalated sexually, which lines up with the messages they had been sending that I had saved. She said she didn't love this guy and there was a stupid mistake. She claimed she wasn't thinking. It was nothing to do with me and that she still loved me. I had done nothing wrong. It was just an escape from what had become a monotonous life. She blamed the hormones. She said she hadn't been well mentally for a while. I didn't know what to do. I went for a walk and I contacted my mother, who lives far away from us. She was understanding and said I had to think about things carefully, as there was still our daughter and our unborn child to think about. I vented to my mother and went back. Despite everything, I still loved my wife. I wanted to be together, to go back to the way things were before we got the house. In the interest of maybe salvaging our marriage and the kids, I didn't tell anyone else anything. She stayed at my mother-in-law's house that night with our daughter so I could get some headspace, but it did little to ease my pain. I wanted to be with her. I called her and said I missed her. She said the same. The next night, we had sex, and it was like nothing had happened. I felt like I needed to reclaim what had been taken from me, so I was the one who initiated it. We decided that we did love each other, and that although it was going to take time, Things would be rough for a while. I just wanted to see what would happen when the baby was born. I couldn't give up so easily. I just asked her to be 100% honest with me from now on. She went back to work and said she had moved to offices away from him. She claimed that they had spoken and she had told him that her family was the most important thing to her and that they could no longer carry on. He asked her if that was what she truly wanted and she reiterated it to him. So we both went back to work, which at first was horrible. I would come home in a different mood every day. Sometimes angry, sometimes crying, sometimes okay. I started trying to study less and spend more time with her watching TV, reading with her next to me, getting up with her in the mornings to say goodbye instead of staying asleep. It wasn't to make sure she wasn't still messaging him. It was because I had realized that this was what I wanted, to be normal again. I started going to the gym, eating healthier, and looking after myself more. We had good days and bad, taking our daughter on outings and playing with her, more sex here and there, her parents paid for us all to go away to a spa, which was nice. After a few weeks, I was slowly but surely believing more and more that this could work. I felt like some good could actually come out of the whole situation. Last week, she said she had to go away on a business trip on a day she doesn't usually work. I said that was pretty irregular and I would obviously be a bit worried. She had asked a friend to take our daughter whilst we were both at work instead of her mother-in-law. This was also unusual. I expressed my concern and asked her if she was using this opportunity to meet up with him again. She said no and gave me the time and location she would be on the day to ease my mind. By this time, things had been going pretty well, although it was still extremely early, three weeks since D-Day. I went to work that day dreading I'd be worried sick. Surprisingly, I was fine. It was actually the first normal day I had experienced at that point. I saw how much she had wanted us to be together, how upset she had been, how much better I felt in such a short amount of time. I believed her. Then she called me on my lunch. She said things had been cancelled at work and she was coming home early. I asked if she wanted to grab lunch as she would be in the same area as my work by that time. She said no, she just wanted to go home as her back was hurting due to the pregnancy, now five months in. I said okay and concentrated on work. I asked her how her day was when she got home and she said work had been boring and not very eventful. We went to sleep but I woke up in the middle of the night. I kept thinking how odd it was that she had gone away that day and then come back so early. To stop the madness going on in my brain, I checked her phone, and it showed that she hadn't been where she said she had been. 
She woke up to me fidgeting with anxiousness and I confronted her. She denied she had seen him again. I pointed out all the evidence and she eventually admitted it. She said they had it cleared the air and they both agreed they wanted to focus on their families and nothing else was going to happen between them. She said they had just talked about what had happened and to get some closure. She hadn't spoken to him at work very much at all since D-Day and she wanted to close the case. I argued that she had set up an elaborate lie, still lied, when she knew I had figured it out and had refused point blank when I asked if she was going to see him that day. She said she went to his house but did not go inside. They went to a local cafe, got some coffee, and just walked around the park talking for an hour or two. I pulled up a picture of a random cafe on my phone which was nowhere near the location she said she was at. I asked if that was the one they had been to. She said yes, that was the one. Another lie. I told her that the cafe was nowhere near where she said she was and she got angry and defensive. She said, I wasn't paying attention. It was all just a bit of a blur. It's not proof I'm lying. I'm telling the truth. Nothing happened. In the morning, as one last test, I said that she would have to prove it. I asked her if she would message the guy saying, I feel much better after yesterday. You? This way, if he replies with something harmless and in line with what she had told me, then it could be true. If, however, he mentions that they had sex again or replies with anything dirty, the game would be up. She refused. I tried to take her phone off the bedside table saying I would send it if she wouldn't. She went mad and screamed at me while snatching her phone away. She then began typing on it furiously. This, to me, was as good as a confession. She said she lied to me again about where she was because she thought I would leave if I found out she wanted to talk to him again. This was yesterday and I haven't really slept in 36 hours. We have agreed for her to stay at her mother's house tonight. I have no idea what to do. There are more details, but I have been typing for a while. I just can't believe that she is pregnant with my child. I am 99.9% .9 sure it's mine, and is still hanging around this guy. I'm mentally ruined. I am so sorry, OP. This is awful, and I am very sorry. But here's what you need to do immediately. 1. Tell her boyfriend's wife he is having an affair with your wife. 2. Tell HR her job that her boss is using company funds to pay for their affair. 3. Begin the divorce immediately. 4. DNA test the fetus. 5. DNA test her daughter. She lies and gaslights you. When caught, she lies some more. Hormones are no excuse for her low morals and bad character. Your wife cheated with her boss because she chose to. She chose to lie and gaslight you to keep the affair going. I think you forgave her too quickly, without any effort on her part to fix what she selfishly destroyed. Reconciliation is a gift from the betrayed to the cheater. She does not deserve it, so take it away from her and kick her out. Make her earn it. You have only seen regret from being caught, not genuine remorse for breaking your heart and soul. And you will never get any remorse from her until she feels the pain she has inflicted upon you. Tell everyone what she did. Tell your friends, family, acquaintances, neighbors, and especially her co-workers how she cheated. If you do not tell the truth about her, then she will definitely lie about you. Until she feels some consequences for betraying you and your family, then she will keep screwing around. She fired you as her husband so you are no longer obligated to shield her from her stupid actions or to keep her shameful secrets. Thanks for tuning in to the Sire. If you enjoyed today's content, smash that like button. Subscribe for more unique insights. Catch you in the next one.